I'm here in Berlin and my guest is Peter Del Vecchio, uh, the producer of Wish. Um, you, your main job is to make sure that everything's running as smoothly as possible, but you're also responsible to keep deadlines. Um, I can only imagine that there are, there, are always, there are always people involved in the making that would like to change that one thing in that one scene or to add something in that scene. How do you make sure that uh, which last minute alterations are important, which are not? Where do you draw the line? Uh, look, the, the biggest deadline we have is, is not only the budget, but the fact we have a release date. So that puts an inherent pressure for us to make decisions along the way. Uh, um, um, uh, I always feel it's my job to help the directors get the movie that they envision up on the screen, but they know that their responsibility is also to do it within budget and within constraints. So we have, a, I've obviously worked with Chris Buck for many years. We have a good uh, working relationship. He knows when I say it's time to move on, that we move on. And when it comes to casting the voice actors, is there a standard process or is it different every time? Uh, it, it's relatively standard. I mean, we, we can audition 20 to 100 people per role, depending upon the role. It did change, obviously, um, with uh, COVID and the quarantine in that we had to do a lot of it um, uh, sort of over, over Zoom, which made it, the process a little bit different. Uh, for this movie, casting Ariana and uh, Chris Pine for the English-speaking version uh, came fairly easily and fairly quickly. They were very, uh, it was very clear to us that they were the right casting. Yeah. I read that you cast Ariana uh, even before she got an Oscar for The West Side Story. Um, what made you sure that she was the right one for the role of Asha? We had already talked with her. We had already um, uh, cut her voice against the design of the character. We knew that she had a very likable voice that we'd want to uh, listen to. She's so talented. She's a singer, dancer, um, great actress. Uh, we saw West Side Story and said, oh, she's going to be very, very popular very soon. Uh, so we seized the opportunity and cast her um, just before uh, she won the Oscar. Before I saw which I deliberately did not look up the voice cast because I want to, wanted to ident identify them while watching. Sure. And with the voice of Magnifico, I instantly thought of Chris Pine, but uh, because he's such a distinguished voice. Yes. Um, but I wasn't aware that he can sing, so it kept me thinking and thinking. So afterwards, I saw that he even sang with Barbara Streisand. So. Um, that is true. He sang with Barbara Streisand. He also played a part in Into the Woods. Uh, so we knew that he could sing. Uh, but more than that, we knew he had the depth uh, of character to portray both the charismatic side, but also devolve into the, the evil villain. And you also used a kind of new technology to make the film look like it was made many years ago. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, we always wanted a storybook feel to the movie uh, to harken back to all the other fairy tales that have been made. But we thought, how great would it be if we could actually use modern technology where you can actually go into the storybook and, and have a dimensional world, yet still evoke the feeling of, of uh, the older films? When I saw Wish just last week, I was blown away. It reminded me of all these wonderful classics, like the hand-drawn animation. Uh, it felt old-fashioned, but in a very good way. Um, how did you achieve that besides the, the technique? I, I think everything about this movie was the combination of uh, feeling reminiscent of things you're familiar with, but also pushing it in the future. Even Julia Michaels is a good example of that. Uh, she's the youngest songwriter ever to write all the songs for a musical. Uh, uh, she, she grew up, uh, so she had the DNA of Disney musicals, but she also has a contemporary flair just to her, her normal songwriting. So again, it's the perfect blend of paying homage to the past, but also pushing us into the future. Speaking of Julia Michaels, she wrote amazing songs oh, that stay within your head yes. after after you leave the cinema. Great. So how was working with her? Uh, look, she's a collaborator. She's used to writing songs for d different uh, artists, uh, so collaboration came naturally to her. We we worked together for, for two years, so uh, it's a definite back and forth. The songs inform the script, the script changes the songs, so you need someone who can collaborate, and she certainly was uh, wonderful to work with. I urge people to stay until the very end of the film yes. because there's a lovely scene after the credits uh, which is 
kind of a nod to the 100th birthday of Disney. Yes. Um, without giving too much away, uh, at what point did you come up with that idea and whose idea was it? We had the idea very early on, not necessarily for the tag at the end of the movie, but somehow that song, uh, which is so iconic, we wanted to have it come into the movie. It came naturally when we realized it was a way of fulfilling someone's wish uh, and also uh, the perfect homage at the end. Thank you very much for the interview and Thank good you. luck with the film. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Good, Good to see you again. Good Thank to you. see you again.